What's up guys? Welcome back to DCS World. Welcome back aboard the Hornet for another tutorial video. In today's video we're going to take a look at the AIM-9 Sidewinder short range air to air missile. The AIM-9 Sidewinder was developed back in the 50s by the US Navy and it's been around ever since in use by countless navies and air forces around the world. The AIM-9 that the Hornet can carry comes in three flavors. We have the AIM-9P, the AIM-9M, which is a little bit more modern, and the AIM-9X, which is the most modern. In this video, we're going to cover the AIM-9M as it strikes a good balance between the really old tech of the AIM-9P and the extremely new tech of the AIM-9X, which we will go over the AIM-9X specifically in a later video when we discuss the joint helmet mounted queuing system. So stay tuned for that because that's really cool. But for the AIM-9 itself, the AIM-9 is a, once again, is a short range. And when I say short range, I mean really short, somewhere in the realm of two to, two to five miles, ideally. You can get up to 10 if you're lucky, but two to five miles is its effective range, I would say. And it is an IR infrared guided missile. When I say infrared guided, that means that the missile's seeker head, which you can see on the missiles there on my airplane, let me zoom in, that little dot on the front, tracks a heat signature and it homes in on that heat signature. The way we actually achieve the heat signature lock is by aiming our aircraft's bore sight with the missile seeker head slave to it to intersect with the heat signature of our target airplane and we will get a tone that tells us when the missile has achieved a lock. So let's set up some things here to get the weapons ready. We first want to go master arm on over here. And we want to go over to the right side. There is a switch here labeled IR cool currently set to off. We need to switch this to normal. The AIM-9 being an infrared guided missile requires a cooling system to actually cool down the seeker head so that it can filter out uh, background noise and unwanted IR returns as well as enhanced flare rejection. Uh, the coolant in the aircraft is slated to last for about three hours, so more than enough coolant for any mission that you might uh, might do in the Hornet. And we also want to get ourselves into air-to-air -air mode. Now, upon flipping ourselves into air-to-air -air mode, the AIM-9 is automatically selected as the default weapon. If, let's say, we had the AIM-7 selected, we could use our weapon select switch to select AIM-9 Sidewinder. Now you'll notice when I select the AIM-9, which we'll is zoom in on the HUD real quick and take a quick look, symbology as compared to the other missiles is a lot simpler. We don't have any ranging information, we don't have any uh, acceptable steering error circles and things like that. All we have is the indication that we have the AIM-9 selected here denoted with 9M because I have AIM-9Ms loaded and I have six of them on the airplane. We also have a circle here. This denotes the position of the IR seeker head. The seeker head currently and by default is slave to the bore sight of the airplane. And for the first method that we're going to use to actually target the AIM-9, we need to maneuver our aircraft's bore sight to line up with the target airplane so that the seeker head can achieve a lock. So let's uh, unpause my camera here and I'm going to unpause the simulation and go find some targets to shoot. So stand by while we get in position. All right, I've got some targets off to the front of me here. So what I'm going to do is make sure I've got everything set up weapon selected. I'm going to maneuver my aircraft to place the seeker head on top of one of the aircraft and see if we can get a locking tone. You might notice that there is a very slight growl that the missile is doing right now. That growl is going to change 
once I get a lock. So let me maneuver. Let's see if I can maneuver on this guy. See him right here. Okay, you hear that tone change there? I'll just pause real quick. That tone changed when the seeker head has started to detect a heat signature. Now, I might actually lose this guy because he's maneuvering a bit, but uh, let's see how that changes. Once we're good with our lock, we can press and hold our cage uncage button, and then the seeker head should uncage itself from the bore site and actively track that heat signature. So stand by and let's see what happens. All right. Hear that sound? We're going to press and hold cage on cage. And now we've got a good tone. It's gone high pitched. Now we're a little far away from this guy. I want to get a little bit closer. Notice how the seeker head, if I move my aircraft, is now tracking that target. So we've got a good IR lock. I'm just trying to get a little bit closer here. Remember, this is a very short range missile. And let's give it a try for here. We're going to squeeze the trigger and call Fox 2. There it goes. And splash. Okay, pretty simple to use, right? Now we have one other way we can actually target the AIM-9 Sidewinder. Right now, we're going to use a radar lock. Now, normally you don't need a radar lock, as I just demonstrated, but you can use the radar to assist the AIM-9 seeker to finding the IR signature. What happens is the AIM-9 seeker then gets slaved to the radar. So let me get turned around here and find a target to lock up on the radar. All right, there's a target right there. Let's lock him up. Come on. All right, we've got him locked up. We've got a radar lock. And as you can see, we've got similar symbology now. I'm just going to pause real quick and take a look. We've got similar symbology now to our other radar guided missiles. Because we're using our radar lock, we actually get this information. So we get ranging information. We see that our closure rate, we see our range currently 4.1 miles. And we do get an ASE as well as a steering cue. You also notice that the seeker head is now slave to the target diamond box on our HUD. So this helps us greatly in identifying targets as well as getting the AIM-9 on target uh, fairly easily. However, you do have a bit of a disadvantage here in that if you go to lock up an enemy target, they are going to get a radar warning before you actually fire your missiles. So... You do lose a bit of the element of surprise. However, at this close range, they probably see you anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, in most cases, I do recommend using the radar to assist in targeting your AIM nines. It's just a little bit, uh, it's a little bit more effective, and uh, you will have better results. So, with that said, let's unpause and shoot this guy. So just as before, we do have to press cage on cage. And it can slave it back to the bore site if we want it to. But for now, we do have... I'm not sure why it's not getting a little bit higher. But we do have a good tone, so we can go ahead and call Fox 2. There it goes, and splash that target. Okay. There he goes. Bye-bye, Mr. MiG-29. So that's it. That's the basics of using the AIM-9 Sidewinder in the Hornet. Again, the other variant of the AIM-9, also known as the AIM-9X, we will explore in a later video. Uh, as it contains some other features that pertain to the helmet mounted queuing system. But for now, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed and found it helpful, and I will see you next time. Take care.